Ramana Maharshi's profound wisdom shines in talks with Sri Ramana Maharshi. This Ramana clip is from a longer video from Richard Clark as he comments on the talk. I'm Richard. Welcome. I'm reviewing and commenting on the book Talks with Sri Ramana Maharshi. Today is from Talk 180. Later, the same gentleman said that sleep was a state of oblivion and the wakeful state was the mind's activity. The mind was in a potential state in sleep. Maharshi, were you not in sleep? Questioner, yes, I was, but in a state of oblivion. There must be a witness of oblivion and the mind which says that I am continuous in both states. Maharshi, who is this witness? You speak of witness. There must be an object and a subject to witness. These are creations of the mind. The idea of witness is in the mind. If there was a witness of oblivion, did he say, I witness oblivion? You, with your mind, said just now that there must be a witness. Who was the witness? You must reply, I. Who is that I again? You are identifying yourself with the ego and say, I. Is this ego, I, the witness? It is the mind that speaks. It cannot be a witness of itself. With self-imposed limitations, you think that there is a witness of mind in oblivion. You also say, I am the witness. That one who witnesses the oblivion must say, I witness oblivion. The present mind cannot arrogate to itself that position. The whole position becomes thus untenable. Consciousness is unlimited. On becoming limited, it simply arrogates to itself the position. There is really nothing to witness. It is simple being. In this talk, the dialogue revolves around the concept of a witness and the nature of sleep and wakefulness. The questioner initially asserts that sleep is a state of oblivion and the wakeful state is the activity of the mind and that the mind is in a state of potential during sleep. Ramana Maharshi questions the idea of a witness challenging the notion presented by the questioner. Ramana points out that this witness requires both an object and a subject, both of which are creations of the mind. Ramana emphasizes that the concept of a witness is a product of the mind itself. The crux of Ramana's teachings in this dialogue lies in the exploration of the I that claims to be a witness. He challenges the questioner to find within themselves this witness. Asking who is the witness, 
the natural answer is I. But exactly who is this I? Examining this, it's ego. But can ego be the witness? Can ego witness itself? Ramana says that the mind which articulates the idea of a witness cannot be the true witness. The mind is limited. The mind is known. Who is the knower? Ramana further dismantles the argument by highlighting the inconsistency of claiming to be the witness of oblivion. He points out that if you were to say, I witness oblivion, then the question rises, who is this I? The mind cannot witness itself. The mind is known. Who is the knower? Does the sun shine on itself? The teachings culminate in the assertion that consciousness is unlimited and that when thought to be limited, it falsely attributes itself to the position of a witness. Ramana emphasizes that there is ultimately nothing to witness. Instead, it is a state of simple being, pure existence, without the need for a separate witness. Ramana Maharshi challenges the conceptualization of the mind and ego as witnesses, guiding you towards a deeper understanding of consciousness and the inherent nature of your being. The witness is known. Who is the knower? So inquire, know yourself, and be always free and at peace. These videos help bring Ramana Maharshi's teachings into your direct experience. Subscribe now 